The talk will discuss and observe several trends in the European crowdfunding markets. Crowdfunding impact investments is becoming more popular in Europe. Several types of social impact are combined with social return in many EU countries. Institutional investors are more and more seeking to co-invest with the crowd. A good example is how Linda Hand is now cooperating with the UK government and a large UK multinational that invests alongside the crowd in UK. Several other examples will be discussed. Cross-border crowdfunding is growing. Crowdfunding investors understand the need to diversify, not only amongst crowdfunding platforms within their home country. Please welcome on stage Peter Hyen, CEO and founder of Linda Hand, sharing his holistic approach for crowdfunding and impact investments in emerging markets. My name is Peter Heijen, I am uh, from the Netherlands. Um, today, uh, well, as just heard on the video, I will be shortly uh, discussing some uh, crowdfunding trends in the world that we observe. Um, and uh, I will also talk, about, talk, a bit, talk a bit about land and crowdfunding platform and actually how we are using these trends. Uh, I must say that in the, in the light of all the blockchain uh, technology discussions earlier, these trends actually might be a bit old fashioned. But uh, please excuse me for that. So Land Hand, just in a nutshell, on, on the picture behind me here, you see two entrepreneurs, one from Ghana and one from Mongolia. These are the type of entrepreneurs. These are two actual entrepreneurs that are funded on our website. So this is basically what we crowdfund. Um, so let me first introduce myself very shortly. I used to be a banker. Uh, you know, seeing the suit, I, were, I still am a bit of a banker. But uh, when I was a banker, I worked in Amsterdam for a bank, and uh, I decided to go backpacking in Bangladesh. And uh, it changed my life. Uh, so seeing the poverty out there, seeing kids live on the street with no parents is really, is really uh, not a nice experience. And it made me think. So I went back to my Excel sheet with my tie, and uh, I thought, you know, what's happening on the other end of the world? Maybe uh, I should change my career. And I did. Uh, I came back as, a, as an entrepreneur, as a social entrepreneur, and started thinking about you know, a scalable solution to poverty. Um, and basically, uh, I think financing can play a crucial role there, and uh, crowdfunding uh, is a perfect tool for that. But I will tell you more about that later. So first, I was a bit hesitant to show you the slide on this you know, uh, conference or event of crowdfunding expert, but just to be sure, you know, we're on the same page here. Uh, so crowdfunding now, it's in the world. In 2015, it was about 35 billion. This year, it will be about 80 billion. Uh, it, it, sounds, it sounds like like a lot, right? But uh, actually, uh, you know, an average retail bank in the Netherlands has about 1,000 billion assets under management. So crowdfunding market globally is 80 billion. It's big, but still, you know, we need to expand uh, rapidly in the coming years. Uh, in order to achieve the goals that we have. So the majority of this amount is actually lending. So where is this all done? Well, actually, Europe is not so big in this. Uh, as you can see from the picture here, it's 6.5 billion. Uh, and the majority of that actually comes from, uh, from UK, which is about 4.5 billion. So if you, you know, all continental Europe is actually pretty small. It's like 1 billion. And if you compare that to the, to the 17 billion in the US and the 10 billion in, uh, in, in, uh, in Asia, continental Europe is really a tiny player if it comes to crowdfunding. Um, so what trends do we see in this, in this market? Um, so first of all, institutionals are joining the crowd. Um, this is actually an old example from Citibank and Lending Club. Lending Club is the biggest crowdfunder in the USA and Citibank uh, the number three bank in the USA. And actually, uh, uh, Citibank wants to serve uh, smaller uh, customers in the USA and cannot reach them through their normal retail network. So they cooperate with Citibank. Uh, and Citibank actually disburses uh, uh, the money from, uh, uh, um, from the uh, lending club, disburses the money from, uh, from Citibank. Another deal recently done is one in the Netherlands from Egon, a big insurance, insurance company, and they cooperated with Funding Circle. So what you see is that the crowdfunders, the crowdfunding platforms, are actually sourcing good deals, um, and that now also institutional investors want to be a part of these deals, simply for the reason that there are good deals. Uh, they can diversify their investments away from the traditional equity markets or, or bond markets, or maybe in some cases, uh, they use the crowdfunding platforms to achieve their missions. 
Uh, I will talk to a bit more about that um, because we're now working, uh, as you heard, in uh, in uh, in the UK uh, together with uh, with the government, and they use crowdfunding as a tool to, to achieve their missions. So another trend that we observe in the Netherlands is actually cross-border crowdfunding. Uh, you know, there's no there's no such platforms uh, anymore uh, that are just focused on one country, so sourcing money from Greece to Greece or from Germany to Germany. Most of them are looking across the borders. Uh, they source money uh, for German uh, uh, SMEs, but they source the money from Finland or from Holland or from UK or from Japan. And actually the money is not only going to Germany, it's going into Finland, it's going into Germany, uh, it's going into multiple countries. And the reason for this is simple. Uh, first of all, investors, they want to diversify the risks. Uh, so if you are a smart investor, you know, diversification is actually lesson number one in investment uh, management. So if you can diversify your, your investments in more countries, that's just very effective. And on the other hand, well, as I said, crowdfunding is still pretty small. Uh, so the, the, the platforms need to scale and they can't stay in one country. So this is why many countries are, uh, many crowdfunders are now going cross-border. Uh, Lendhand is itself an example. We have 28 uh, we have investors from 28 countries, and I actually checked today. There's a couple of Greece in there, a uh, couple of investors from Greece also active on uh, the Landhand platform. And another example is, uh, is funded by me from Sweden. They opened uh, offices in, uh, in Finland, in Sweden, Malaysia, and also in Ukraine. And another example is Eureka. They are licensed in the UK, in the Netherlands, in uh, Dubai, and in Malaysia. And this is a trend uh, that we see more often um, than not. And the third tr trend is actually the trend where my presentation is about. It's about impact crowd investing. Um, so, you know, getting a financial return on your money, like 6% interest, is getting kind of old fashioned. Uh, but using your money, your savings, or your investments actually uh, to deliver a social impact to the world is getting trendy, uh, it's getting hot. and. Uh, most of the you know uh, wealthy families are, are doing this, uh, but also in crowdfunding this is uh, this is hot. Um, so I, I, see, I see I made a little typo there. So private, yeah, no, I didn't make a typo. Private capital in the world uh, is over 100 trillion. Uh, so that's a massive, massive amount of private capital in the Netherlands only. It's it's a thousand billion. If we just you know put a portion of that into an impact investment. And we will dramatically change the world for the good. Um, and that's what, uh, what Lendhand is all about. Uh, Lendhand is a crowdfunder that's actually sourcing this private capital into projects that make the world a better place. And this, uh, these projects are, in our case, uh, always in either Asia, Africa, or Latin America. So, this is one of the entrepreneurs that we have financed actually in uh, Cambodia, I think. So, I founded Lendhand, right, uh, after my banking career. Um, and so the idea that I came up with uh, um, is actually, you know, in the fight against poverty, I believe that job creation is the most powerful weapon. You know, if, if these dads and moms in, in, um, in Bangladesh, if they would have a job, they would probably not uh, put their kids out on the streets. Uh, they'll just, you know, give their, th these kids a roof and food. But it's not the case. These jobs are not around in uh, Bangladesh, and these kids live on the street. It's, uh, it's, this, it's the reality even today. Um, so job creation is really an effective tool. And if you look in Bangladesh or in Ghana or you know, countries like that, the problem for these SMEs is that they cannot find any funding. You know, they cannot go to the typical microfinance organization because they will say, well, we're used to, to borrowing, to lending money to, to a poor lady of 400 euros. They cannot go to a bank because banks will say, well, if you need half a million, you can come to us. So the segment in the middle there is underfunded. Uh, so we are crowdfunding that now. And we're crowdfunding that at uh, a monthly rate of about uh, 1 million euros per month, uh, mainly sourced in the Netherlands and in UK. And it's going to countries such as Ghana, uh, Zambia, uh, Colombia, uh, Philippines, uh, Cambodia, uh, Uganda, for example. Uh, how this works is uh, you don't invest directly into these SMEs because that's from a legal perspective and operational perspective very complex. So we actually work via local institutions. 
Uh, they are the counterparty to these loans, um, which is for the investment from the investment perspective uh, interesting, because these are solid existing organizations that have been working in Ghana for 20 years, that have a solid portfolio uh, of SMEs in that country, um, and that can actually that that, that needs that need funding to grow. Um, so these are the counterparties, and this is what takes away the risk for the investors. So some examples, I'm not sure if this, this is, uh, we can see this, but uh, uh, you know, this is a typical microfinance example in, uh, in, uh, in India and some solar projects in, uh, in Kenya. Um, uh, but what we've done recently actually, so we started as a pure SME funder for emerging markets. And Lendahand has transitioned itself into an online impact platform. Uh, and, and, you know, the trendy word for that is now SDG investing, uh, sustainable development goals uh, from the United Nations. And the United Nations has set itself uh, and, you know, I guess us all, 17 goals to transform the world. And number one there is uh, poverty. Uh, so what we learned is that there's much more ways actually to fight poverty, for example, uh, access to clean water uh, or uh, enough food production in the world. Um, and another one that we've been uh, doing recently is, uh, is access to clean energy, and I, I'm a big, big fan of that. Uh, it's solar energy in Africa, um, and uh, I would like to take you through an example of that. So in, in Africa, there's about a billion people that live with no energy grid. Uh, and they spent about 30 billion dollars on kerosene or diesel uh, to light uh, to light their house uh, and to charge their phone. Uh, this is very expensive. I was in Uganda a couple of weeks ago, and uh, these kids actually uh, have black black stuff in their noses from that. It's like smoking two packages of cigarettes a day. They have to walk, you know, a couple of hours to a gas station to get some diesel. Uh, it's polluting the world. Uh, it's just one kerosene light, as you can see on this picture. It's dangerous, most of them get into fires. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is, is, is actually this thing over here. It's called the solar home system. Uh, they, they're sold in Africa for about 400 euros, but these families, they cannot afford 400 euros. So basically credit, credit is needed. Um, the businesses that run this uh, don't have all this credit. They're producers of these systems. Uh, they're not credit, they're not microfinance organizations, so they, they, their, their growth just stops. Um, so we think that's a waste, uh, because these, these machines, these, these solar home systems transform lives in Africa, and I've seen that. But the business, it's not growing. The, 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 the amount, it's, it's, there's only 250 million invested in that on a yearly basis, and, and billions are needed uh, to serve all the Africans with a system like that. So this is what we've done. Uh, we've done 2.2 million now in, uh, in the last year of these systems. Um, again, local businesses are the, are the counterparty, so we don't bore directly to the families. Uh, the same lower risk, and our investors uh, are getting 6% return on this, on the euro. So you're not helping this family uh, with a cool solar home system and four lights in their house, and you know, it's even a, it includes a television you get a 6% interest rate on that. And uh, you know, from my former banker life, I can actually say it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, deal from a risk return perspective. So what does this offer? Well, if you look at the SDGs, it's 2,700 ho solar home systems installed. Uh, SDG number seven from the United Nations is uh, affordable energy, so we've done that. Uh, good health, you know, these kids now live in a clean house with no pollution, uh, 11 tons of CO2, CO2 reduced, so climate action, and obviously these people save every month uh, uh, on, their, on their energy costs. Diesel is more expensive than solar. So we've saved 450,000 euros for these families, so we're, we're fighting poverty here as well. And schooling, you know, these kids can, uh, can go to school. So, um, an example of, uh, of, of uh, a partnership that we really believe in, uh, where we actually combine the trends, what I've discussed earlier is what we're now doing in the UK. Uh, we've launched uh, a platform in the UK 
It's called Energize Africa. Uh, we've done that with uh, with the British existing crowdfunder. And actually, uh, the UK Aid, which is the British government, uh, but also Virgin United, uh, have decided actually to join. And they're match funding the crowd. So if a British investor is saying, hey, I'm putting a thousand euro into a couple of these solar home systems, then so will they. So this actually catalyzes the British crowd. I'm a big fan of that model because the government basically uh, catalyzes the crowd, de-risks the crowd, and this way we can actually transform all these lives. So surfing the waves here, uh, cross-border crowd crowdfunding, obviously, uh, you know, on a Dutch platform in the UK, uh, they finance projects in, uh, in Uganda and Kenya. Institutions have joined here and they all involved um, uh, impact investments. Um, and I think the key here uh, for me is that, you know, impact investments, you know, thousands, thousands of billions are needed here. And in order to, uh, to scale that, uh, partnerships are, are needed. And this is, uh, this is basically also why I'm here. Uh, we want to scale up. And uh, thanks for that. Okay, that's it. Thank you. So you're right in time. Yeah. 11 seconds. I, w I just have one question. Sure. Where is the differential? Because I'm also invested in some of those projects. Oh, you are? Nice but through a platform called Kiva. Right. <laughs> so that was a wrong platform, I guess. No, it's fine. That's good. Where is the difference? Uh, well, obviously, Kiva is, a, is an American-based uh, crowdfunding platform. They're much bigger. They've done about one billion. Uh, so there's a, there's a difference. Uh, Kiva is generally seen as an alternative for donation. So the average investment amount is about uh, 200, mm -hmm. 200 euros for each investor. Uh, at our platform, it's about 8,000. Wow. So people come to lend a hand with their savings, with their investments, and people come to Kifa uh, because they basically want to donate something. So you offer a serious investment opportunity? Yeah. So Kifa okay. offers 0% interest rate, and we offer between 3 and 6. So I think for Greece, hearing the Act for Greece program all over the day, it'll be a perfect partner yeah. to act on, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you for your talk. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.